welcome back. It's great to have you. Just how does it feel to be uh, back in the mixer, back doing Fight Week where you belong? Yeah, it's it's great to be here. It's been a while, and you know, I'm happy finally be here. You know, I've been missing a lot this year. Alex is, of course, uh, ranked at 15 in the ranking. Sometimes fighters hesitate a little bit to fight down, but given the disappointments you face with fighters pulling out injured, was it just a case of anybody who's going to make it to the dance? Um, exactly, yeah. It's been a while. I, it's my fifth or sixth camp since my last fight, and all of them were falling off. So um, I'm glad that at least I have somebody from top 15 because none of these guys wanted to fight me, and whoever they offered me, unfortunately, uh, fell off. Most of them, like only the one was from me, which I didn't know they had the this lay of time from suspension. But other than that, uh, all of them, seen, uh, like from the beginning of this year, all my opponents were getting injured. So I've been ready since last May and was asking uh, fights. Uh, but finally, we're back. Alex is a real showman. Uh, he's an entertaining guy. Do you see that as uh, what's going to play out, an entertaining fight, or is that potentially a trap to fall into? Is it all about getting the result here? I feel like I know his game plan, which I'm not going to talk about on the media and live. But, um, yeah, as I said earlier, he's not the guy that who's going to try to stand up with me, you know. Of course, there are many good strikers, and he fought many good strikers, and he is a striker, very entertaining guy, very chaotic fighter, but I'm a different breed, and uh, he knows that. So you lost to the last fight, and then you have a you know a long layoff. So. Which elements of are you improving mostly last, you know, like uh, 18 months as an MMA fighter? Um, <clears throat> I've been improving in all of the aspects. You know, my wrestling, I have to thank my wrestling coach, Michael Perez and Chris uh, Rodriguez. Uh, uh, this year and a half, I've been training with them very hard in wrestling. My striking, uh, I sliced uh, uh, even more and more with my coach, with Master Rafael Cordero and all the kings. And uh, I have a pleasure that in my team joined uh, Leo Vieira from Jiu Jitsu from Checkmate, which is, uh, I have this pleasure to work with him. And I've been upgrading uh, my ground game with him and of course at Kings with Victor Silverio, the Ricardo Testa, and all of the guys. So can you let me know that a little bit a detail of training with the OPR? Uh, what details? Can you let me know that some detail of training with uh, uh, Leo Gini? Oh sure. The, real quick, I'll tell you how we met. You know, the, my daughter Nita and her, his daughter Clara. Are, playing volleyball in the same team and we're accidentally, we are on their tournament, like sitting on the tournament, like next to each other <laughs> and we're cheering for our daughters and then we're checking each other and we both have a broken ears and it was like, who are you, who are you? <laughs> and we didn't really know each other and uh, when we talked it appeared that he's a legend in Jiu Jitsu and uh, he got the respect of me as well, so we made this quick connection the last year, and since then you know, we've been a friends. You know, it's more than a coach uh, uh, for me. He's a he's a very good friend, and his family, and uh, he's been trying his best to help me in grappling. Do you feel that it's the destiny to meet meet him? This kind of the accident, you know, you will be a completely MMA fighter. Uh, second, please. This is it. Do you feel that they are destiny to meet him? Yeah, yeah. I feel like the God uh, always has something, you know, plans for us. And 
I don't think that was uh, accidental. That everything has a reason, and uh, it appeared. It appeared. To, and, uh, if you guys know my story as well, how I met Master Rafael, like it was my last day in 2014, when, uh, traveling in U.S. and I was gonna go in back in Amsterdam where I used to live. And uh, before my flight, I went there to Kings to check it out, and somehow I met Rafael. And uh, since that day, we <laughs> he's my father figure is my part of my family and um, pretty much similar story happened last year you seems like uh, it's more you know close to the brazilian fighting world <laughs> so how do you feel that you can how do you think about you know brazilian military for the fighting i'm part brazilian you know guys <laughs> yeah. in my dna i don't know like um yeah, so the Giga is my real name, right? So in Brazil, they have the same name, but they call it Giga. <laughs> so <laughs> a lot of Brazilians call me that, too, and I'm okay with it. So, I mean, uh, yeah, I have no st I still haven't been there in Brazil, but I'm surrounded, like, 99% of my teammates are Brazilians. And um, I feel like one of my best friends are from Brazil, my coaches, my my teammate here as well, Vinicius Enzi. Hopefully soon he's going to be in part of USC as well. And um, yeah, I enjoy the Brazilian acai food, everything. <laughs> Muito obrigado. Muito obrigado. Hello, I'm from Korea. Hey. Uh, you always said and write SNS, you want Korean zombie. But yeah, fight is not take uh, take place. Do you have any bad feeling about Korean Jobby? I'll be honest to you because um, <laughs> after my last fight, uh, there was a post in Twitter, and uh, someone was uh, intimidating that uh, from Korean Zombies Twitter. And uh, I saw the post, which was very insulting to my family, to my past mom, which passed away like 10 years ago. And um, when I see something like this, uh, I don't care who you are. I'm going to come uh, wherever you are. It doesn't matter what country you are, and we'll, we'll deal with it. But uh, then he sent me the message and said that that was not him. And uh, a few days ago, we met uh, at the stairs. And uh, we talked, uh, and he uh, he said right away that that was not him who sent, uh, who did this tweet, and uh, somebody made the fake tweet or something like this. So that was the only thing f to me. Other than that, he's a great fighter. He's a legend of the sport. You know, I I don't have any other feelings. So we pretty much like fixed this, but. He's a uh, he's a top ten uh, featherweight. I'm here, and um, yeah, we'll see. We I'm not gonna be surprised in the near future if we have a fight. You know, so first thing first, I have a fight. He has a fight. He he has different plans this week. I have different completely plans. You know, my main plan is to come back, and then we talk. Well, given that you're both here, is that a natural call out for you when you get the, the job done here? Say again, please. Is Korean Zombie a natural call out for you once you've got the job done here? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what happens, you know. Um, I'm not thinking about that at the moment. This, is, for me, is a very important time to come back. Oh, all my lights at the moment are on Alex. I have an opponent who's been around for a long time. And he's the first one from top 15 who called me out. And uh, I take this shit personal always. It's not just a game to me. And uh, I'm coming here to shut his lights off. How much are you keeping yourself abreast of what's going on in terms of Aljamain Sterling, Alexander Volkanovsky? Um, you know, those guys, uh, s sorry, people calling out Volk from the division below, people wanting to come up to your division. Are you keeping an eye on them? Yeah, always, of course, yeah. And uh, always interesting 
because we know the, how much money Connor made with uh, that type of things, and uh, I see people are trying, you know, like. Aljam has been a champ for a long time till he lost last weekend. And uh, definitely, you know, you cannot be non happy when kid is trying to go and make some interesting, entertaining thing for the fans, for you, for me, for all the people who love MMA, right? And um, take a risk. We saw the Adesanya tried the similar thing, but unfortunately for him, it didn't happen. Um, it makes a lot of sense because when you're a double champ, well, oh, Volk tried the last year, same, same thing as well, right? So he's such a great champ in his own division, but see, like you go up division and it's not easy. Even uh, there are a lot of thoughts, maybe, maybe he won the fight, maybe he did not, but it's a big risk to take. And, um, but before you do your job done, I don't think you should call out uh, somebody, somebody like that because you see, like Al Jamin just got knocked out. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing right now, man. I'm doing my thing. I'm, I'm concentrating on myself at this moment in this fight. I always have a bigger plans. Uh, I have my still dream to make it and uh, once I deal this business this weekend, and we'll see again that night. Max is an overwhelming favorite in the main event. Uh, I just wondered if you have your take on that fight. Mm, yeah, yeah, Max is definitely a favor to anybody in the division because he's been so long and he's been a champ for long, so uh, so long. Uh, and we saw his fights with Volk. Uh, one fight was super close. People thought that Max won the fight, and uh, we saw the Zombies fight last time, and that was not a great performance. So we, everybody thinks that Max is going to win this fight. So am I. Um, I, sh I. I think I should be there somewhere in the main event. Uh, but yeah, first thing first, you know. <laughs> first thing first. Yeah, I can't wait to come back, guys. Giga, Giga, whatever. <laughs> Ninja. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks for your attention. I want uh, real quick to uh, give my um, respect and Thanks to all the fans who stayed after my last fight with me and also haters because all these people are motivating me, you know, to stay here, to be here, to come back and to prove that I'm better than you guys saw the last time. And uh, real quick, sponsor, uh, thanks to sponsors as well, Achara Bed, the Monster Energy Golf, Setanta Sports, Ines Hemp, Saigon Sports Club and all my team around. Thank you guys.